On Tuesday, the 9th of December, Forms 17 and 18 will be visiting Warbury Iron Age Hillfort as part of their humanity. Monday begins at Priory School. And, uh, Arthur Spencer, the headmaster, makes his weekly announcements during the tutor group period. Right. First of all, we've got... Andrew Simmons is in the second year tutor group, 26. It's going to be a candlelit one. Remember, some of you are making candles for it. Uh, on the 17th and 18th of December. Anne Wilson, his tutor, started at Priory this term. She teaches pottery. Remember we were out talking about the Blue Peter Appeal? Yeah. Well, it's just arrived this morning. Oh, great. What's about that for this person? Hey, look. <laughs> so, what we'll have to do, one lunchtime, anyone wants to come over, perhaps we'll design some more posters and then come over to the art room and do some. Oh, oh look at It says here, look, I got this wrong, but this picture, oh, you know these lights like having Christmas when you go down the street? Yeah. Right, but they're in series. Pieces are in parallel, what's that? I don't know. <laughs> Let's have a look. They are in parallel. Parallel? Why? I don't know. Because they are, wouldn't they? They call that parallel. Mr. Daniel takes you, does he? No. Well, Mr. Stedman. Mr. Stedman. Mr. Stedman. No. Sir Simon. Did you, did you uh, have a word with him after the lesson? No. No. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, what you were all doing this way? Yeah. I've done parallel. Uh, that's parallel. Because they're all in a row like that. Well, I don't understand that either. Right, I'll have a word with him after right. two time and ask him to explain the other thing he's going to after the lesson next time. Priory places a strong emphasis on the pastoral curriculum. This didn't exist in Anne's previous school. I found it very, very difficult because being a form teacher in my other school, well, it was just normal and easy going. You mark the register. And for the 20 minutes or so that you were with the children, it was very normal and relaxed. You got to know them just by talking to them. I also find that my subject, pottery, is the sort of subject where children will, in the lesson time, will sit and talk to me because they don't have to sit in absolute silence. Um, so that they'll, if they have got any problems, quite often they'll discuss it during that time. But I find the, I found it here at the beginning very false in a way. You're, okay, we're interested in what the children are doing, we're interested in any problems they have got, but I don't see that it has to be kind of forced. Meanwhile, senior management meets for one of its regular discussions. One of the items on the agenda today is IPSO, Improvement to Professional I Skills you by Observation. Looking at IPSO, IPSO is something new to the school this term. Um, is it your own abbreviation, David, or is it nationally recognised? No, I know, it's just purely... Uh, your your abbreviation. Well, IPSO, Improving Professional Skills by Observation, something that uh, came partly out of our staff conference, though I think uh, it was uh, in mind even before uh, Ted Ragg came to talk to us. Um, my uh, own course at the university hasn't enabled me to attend very often, though I came to the last session and it was a very worthwhile one indeed. Um... The two that we started with were the simplest, opening routines and end routines. And at the moment, we're working on IPSO 1, the one that we've called academic engagement time, which is a bit of a mouthful, really. So we changed the title of that now to uh, time on task, which actually illustrates that these are very tentative uh, at the moment and need a lot of modification in the light of how easy it is to use them. And the purpose of this one is simply to look at two pupils and find out how much time they actually spend on yeah. task. And at the moment we've had uh, results ranging from 16 and a half minutes uh, out of the 70 minute period up to 60 plus minutes, I might add, from a colleague on your left there, yeah, yeah. Well, managed to yeah. achieve this with not a highly motivated boy as well. Mm. So that's where we're at at the moment. I think there's a lot more time needs to be spent on the time on task um, exercises mm -hmm. before we arrive at some conclusion about what a normal uh, time on task rating is, if you like, uh, for a given two or three weeks to, uh, to go past, do the same observation again with the same class and see any noticeable difference between the time on task spent by particular children. Yes, in fact, uh, some very encouraging uh, results have come out of this type of work. One of our new colleagues um, teaching in a resource-based class, for example, when first observed, the two children achieved, um, well, the lowest rating, the 16 and a half so far, and um, 22 minutes on task. 
Now, having analysed the reasons for that, uh, uh, a week later, the same group with the same children, having rearranged the furniture, having introduced the idea of, in your opening routine, setting targets for the children, having overtly said you were going to monitor their work at certain <coughs> points during the lesson, all these three things were done, and the uh, amount of time the same two individuals spent on task actually just about doubled. OK, 28, can I have your attention now, please? Could you put your pens down? The time on task observation is being carried out in the humanities faculty. OK. First of all, um, remember that last time we talked a little bit about Judaism, and we talked a lot about Sikhism. One thing that we learnt about Judaism was that there's a particular wall in Jerusalem that's very important to Jewish people. Can you put your hands up and tell me which wall that is and why it's important? Tanya? It's the, wall, it's the only wall left of the temple that King Herod made. Good girl, yes. It's the last um, remaining bit of King Herod's temple. The first thing then that I wanted to do is, first of all, for the girls to very quietly get their Exploring Religion book twos from there. And sit down quickly. The Humanities Faculty is resource-based. Pupils follow worksheets as part of what is known as a contract. Just having a look through um, somebody's work, and there's a particular task on one of your, on your contract. Chris Dickinson, Head of Humanities, is doing the observation. Tomorrow, the faculty is interviewing for a new teacher. Chris discusses the interviews with Arthur Spencer. Well, it's your big day tomorrow, Chris. Um, it's very sad that we're losing uh, Janet Abbey, but uh, I suppose eventually all good teachers get promotion. Um, we advertised this post, what, about a month ago, and we've got about 30 applications, and you've narrowed them down to uh, five. And uh, you'll do the bulk of the interviewing tomorrow. So what will you be looking for in particular? I think there's three things that we've got to find about um, during the interview. The main thing is that they feel comfortable teaching subjects yes. um, only for a short space of time that they're not specialists in because mm -hmm. um, that's going to involve them perhaps being answer, uh, asked questions that they don't know the answers to mm -hmm. um, and they might find that a bit threatening. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is the organisational skills and with resource-based work mm -hmm. when they're marshalling all the resources and getting ready at the beginning of lessons, uh, packing up at the end. Mm -hmm. They need considerable skills of, of organisation yep, and class management. Um, perhaps more skills if they're teaching outside the humanities area. Where does Janet do most of her teaching at the moment? Well, most of it being first, second and third year is done in the specialist rooms mm -hmm. with the timetabled faculty meeting where we discuss most of the, of the work that has been designed. Should this person get to the stage of designing materials, then it will come under very close scrutiny. Yeah. I think the main thing, though, is that um, with the deputy heads in the faculty, any work that's produced comes under quite a lot of scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And you've got and to I be. And I hear you're a hard taskmaster. Well, right, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you've got to be fairly um, resilient, I mm -hmm. think, to yeah. have yeah. something that you've produced criticised yeah. in that yeah. way. Yes, I think one or two of your uh, younger members of staff have been a bit depressed by finding so many very senior staff in the faculty. Yes. But, uh, well, I think the important thing is that when somebody designs a unit of work, everybody else is going to be teaching yeah. it. Mm, yeah. And therefore everybody else feels that, you know, justified in making a comment oh, yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah, that's fair um, enough. Especially yeah. after we've run yeah. through it once. And it can be a little bit daunting when yeah. this happens mm -hmm. in that way. Yeah. Anne obviously enjoys pottery. Amongst other things, she likes the fact that it appeals to children of all abilities. Clary's faculty system is a new experience. She finds that she has to fit in with the organisation of a larger unit. Before, it was just a very small department. Really, it was the head of department, another art teacher, and myself. Um, right. We were linked with domestic can... science, but yeah, there was only one head. Uh, here, it's the faculty system is very, very different. A um, lot bigger, not more teachers in the group, so of course things are different. You know, the organisation seems to be um, a lot more tedious in a way. Before it was just you know, a few of us and we could pass things on easily by word of mouth. Here we've got the faculty meeting, um, which well, it helps in a way. I suppose when you've got such large members in a department, you, you need a faculty meeting. I find it helps. 
but also I find with it being uh, instead of just a, uh, more localised relations, you you don't have as much time with your head of faculty. So if you have got any small problems at a faculty meeting, you don't particularly want to bring them up. The faculty used to be called the design faculty. It was renamed the creative faculty after Jeff Molyneux became its head. The next uh, matter, of course, is, is uh, the ongoing one that we discussed last week. Um, we had a very good discussion on the effect that the second year we're having on this faculty. I've continued to do a little bit of personal research uh, with the groups that you're having, and I've continued to collate the information from you individually. <coughs> and uh, I've reached the stage now where I feel I've got enough information to go to the second year tutors meeting, which I'm going to do this evening and uh, put uh, before them the, the sort of um, information that I've received from you. Uh, only yesterday we had uh, another example of their antisocial behaviour in these large groups. Uh, individually, some of the nicest children I've ever taught, but put collectively into big groups like this. Uh, you know, we, we're getting this, uh, this uh, really strange behaviour, group behaviour. Um, I mean, last Tuesday afternoon, uh, we, for some reason, we decided that last lesson on a Tuesday, they were all a bit high. Yeah. They were a bit noisy. Very there. high. But today, yesterday, it was just... I mean, uh, they just got carried away. They just do not know how to behave. Mm. 